Hi, hello, welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is January the 12th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Happy Friday, happy Friday to ya. Uh, let's see here, what do I have to really report? Today was very slow at work. Um... I literally just played games on my phone. Shout out to Marvel Snap, not sponsored. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a, it was a solid day. I had a, a good time. Generally, the worst part about my 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 eight hours was I was getting tilted that I was just losing. I was losing at the game, but you know that's fine. That's all good. Uh, let's see. Food corner was burger, hot dog, fry, and. Um, I added uh, some hush puppies in the mix because you know I'm a little fatty. I'm a little fatty magoo. Um, so yeah, you're all caught up on my Joneses. Uh, let me go ahead and do my startup and then we'll get into some news, news for my newsies. Uh, I feel like it's going to be, um, just weekend wise. Like it's, it's not going to be fun. I feel like it's going to be a cozy little weekend, which is fun. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it's the weekend. You want to get out, you want to do stuff, but like, it's just going to be messy and mushy outside. A lot of rain, cold. So I'm probably going to be staying in. Okay. Our first story... Um, comes from the Associated Press. U.S. British militaries launched massive retaliatory strike against Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen. The U.S. and British militaries bombed more than a dozen sites used by the Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen on Thursday in a massive retaliatory strike using warship and submarine-launched Tomahawk missiles uh, and fighter jets, U.S. officials said. The U.S. Air Force Mideast Command said it struck over 60 targets at 16 sites in Yemen, including command and control nodes, munitions depots, munition depots, launching systems, production facilities, and air defense radar systems. Um, you know, essentially, he say, uh, Joe Biden came up and was like, hey, you know, if you guys are going to keep... Keep messing with us, Jack. You're gonna keep messing with the the Red Sea and and, and getting in our way. We're gonna we're not gonna hesitate. Um, so yeah, I mean, essentially, it was uh, the U.S. and the U.K. making good on um, their threats. I guess you can say, saying, "Hey, you gotta watch it. You guys are gonna keep making these strikes on us on our boats and stuff. You know, no more." Um, Obviously, to me, this is fucked up. I, I can understand it, like I said before in other episodes. This is like the tit for tat. This is the escalation. But that's the thing that's just so crazy is that like the West has decided that this is an easier option than, te- than turning around and telling Israel to be like, yo, just stop. Just stop. Just do the ceasefire. Just stop it. Um, that this is easier to do to me, which, by the way, this this whole you know airstrike has res- resulted in five people being killed um, on the Houthi side, as well as um, wounding six. So you know, of course, that has prompted response from you know the Houthis, and then also Iran, at least just verbally saying, hey, you know, we're definitely going to retaliate. We're definitely going to be doing something about that. And, you know, yet again, this tit for tat is just going to increase. It's just going to escalate. Um, meanwhile, like I said, Israel just gets to keep doing what they're doing. They're going to keep doing their bombardments. They're going to keep doing, you know, their their targeting. And it, it's just going to keep on going and keep on blossoming. And, you know, meanwhile, we just keep saying, because this is something I was kind of thinking about, you know, just throughout the day. is like how I was going to wear this shit, talk about this shit. It bothers me. And I said this before, and it's just going to be a motif that, like, we just keep making big bads. You know what I mean? As, uh, you know, Western society, 
we just get to say and feel and dictate, well, these guys are the bad guys and they're the bad axis. And then we got to make sure that we keep these these people down. More times than not, it's just, it is a group of color and we highlight and, you know, focus on all the things that they do. And we say, well, they're, they're harboring terrorists, yada, yada, yada. Meanwhile, there's terrorists in every fucking goddamn country. I feel like we don't talk about that enough as, as, as people. <laughs> like, we literally have them in our own backyard. They are everywhere doing shit domestically and abroad. It is yet again the narrative that dictates, well, these are the bad guys and we are the good guys. And that is just something that I feel like, I don't know, once that broke for me, I just feel like that's part of now what I do when I what I want to talk about is just like, you got to dispel that shit. We are human beings at the end of the day. And your life doesn't matter any more than anyone else's life. And I just feel like as people, we need to make sure that we, we take that into account when we think about the shit. You know what I mean? And... You can say, well, oh, you know, they're threatening other people's lives by, by these, you know, these strikes and, and people are getting hurt. Yeah, for sure. I understand. That. I'm not condoning that action in that regard. I would like to see, you know, more peaceful ways of, of fighting this shit. But at the end of the day, this is the route that is chosen. And they are trying to do this in the, mo- you know, without actually like taking lives, I think. At least I feel like they are. They've done so many strikes. I have not seen or heard any coverage of anyone dying from any of the assaults from the Houthi, Houthi boats outside of their own crews getting killed in the, in the attempts um, as the shit just, you know, once again, continues to get ratcheted up. Um, and, and all this, and another aspect I, I wanted to kind of hit on too is that I really feel like what motivates, you know, the West in this specific um, arena, this theater here in the Red Sea in this area is the money aspect is the fact that they're you know motherfuckers are saying hey man the, our supply chain's getting fucked up our money flow is getting fucked up we got to take this shit the long way you guys got to do something about this and this is why this whole prosperity guardian operation bullshit is what it is because we need to make sure that these boats get to where they are going on time so we get our little fucking treats and you know yet again are, are the treats more important than than actual human lives no they aren't you know i, I feel like if you ask the average person they're not going to say that i would hope but yeah um that's where we're at with that i i just felt like you know definitely need to talk about this shit we actually hit yemen like spots in yemen i know i'm just kind of you know uh grazing this stuff and kind of not hitting it in the details but you know, that's intense. It's not nothing. I, 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 I know that this shit does not get the right kind of coverage. Because I remember back, you know, when we're talking about Obama, strikes in Yemen were happening then. And strikes happened during Trump's administration. These are things that happen. They get talked about very briefly and then they, they get moved along. And I, and I understand it's just like a person who's not keeping their ear to this shit. You just go, oh, okay, that happened in some place very far away. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't mean anything. But that is why I, I feel like it is important to talk about it here while we have such a highlight on it. Because this shit keeps happening over and over and over again. And like, this is just me finally catching the loop. And I, I just feel like it's just important, you know, that we should know about this shit. We should think and really dwell upon this shit before we have an opinion uh, about, it, I don't know, I guess, uh, you know, the the whole Israel-Palestine shit, because I know that that bleeds into it. You know what I mean? It, it all winds up being connected here. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of uh, mucking up a segue here, but let's go ahead and move on to the next beat. Uh, from NPR, another update. Israel defends itself at the UN's top court against allegations of genocide. Accused of committing genocide against Palestinians, Israel defended its war in Gaza at the United Nations highest court Friday, after a day after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blasted the allegations as hypocrisy that screams to the heavens. Uh, Israel, which has which was founded in the aftermath of the Holocaust has vehemently denied the accusations brought by South Africa in one of the biggest cases ever to come before an international court, one that has drawn international attention and protesters from both sides of the courthouse. Uh, Let's see here. What else do we want to pull? Um, I I will read a quote here. Uh, We live in a time when words are cheap in an age of social media and identity politics. The temptation to reach for the most outrageous term to vilify and demonize has become for many irresistible. Israeli legal advisor Tal Becker told a packed auditorium at the Ornate Palace of Peace in Hague. 
He added that South Africa has regrettably put before the court a profoundly distorted factual and legal picture. The entirety of its case hinges on deliberately curated, decontextualized, and manipulative description of the reality of current hostilities. I I highlight this to say this is what their words are, and I, I do want to at least give them that, like, you know, Israel that, and, you know, say, hey, like, you know, this is, this is balanced as I can kind of get it. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm at least doing better than CNN did, where they said, hey, we're going to air Israel's part and what they have to say, but we're not going to cover anything about, we're not going to actually give you equal, adequate coverage of what South Africa said. So I was like, well, at least let me try to do that. You know what I mean? Invest in my fucking humble ability as one human being, you know? Um, but I, I obviously disagree. I, I, I feel like it is Israel in the situation that is going to be doing that. Also, something I, I wanted to throw context on too, part of the reason why I kind of did this in like a part one, part two, because this is going to be a long thing. This is going to take months, maybe even years in terms of a trial. So I don't know how many times we're going to hit this, maybe just for the high notes. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of get both sides of it. Obviously, I, I kind of reiterated that in the first part. Um that this is more or less going to be Israel's defense saying, hey, this is self-defense. What happened on August, uh, or, or not August, I'm sorry, October 7th, um, was part of a genocide on us. And we need to make sure to preserve, you know, ourselves, our society, our, you know, our state. And that is, you know, their mantra here. That is their modus operandi. Um I mean, and that's what they're going to be hanging their, their shit on, you know what I mean? And essentially, they're going to say that, you know, the other side is just warping and, you know, taking things from weird and wrong angles and, you know, playing a game. Um, I, I disagree. Uh, for me, I feel like the second I you hear them calling, what was it, um, them the, the uh, I forget what they called them, the political arm of Hamas. I was like, bro, what is that? That's so out of pocket to say. Like, South Africa has every reason to call this shit out. They've gone through this shit. And I, and I feel like they're hinting at that, that hypocrisy, but it's like the people who are bringing this up are the people who had to endure the apartheid. You know what I mean? In Africa, which is the same kind of apartheid you can equate to what's going on in Israel and Palestine. So that is why... You know, I, I think that that's what drove South Africa to really make this claim and say, no, we are going to take this shit all the way to The Hague. And, um, you know, I, I just give them so much kudos and credit for doing that. You know what I mean? Um, let me see here. What else did I really want to pull here? My, that might be it. Um, you, actually, no, I did want to read this part. Uh, South Africa sought to broaden the case beyond the Israel-Hamas war. The violence and destruction in Palestine and Israel did not begin on October 7th, 2023. The Palestinians have experienced systematic oppression and violence for the last 76 years, the South African Justice Minister Ronald uh, Maloa said. Mothers, fathers, children's, children, siblings, grandparents, aunts, cousins are often all killed together. This killing is nothing short of destruction of Palestinian life. It is inflicted deliberately. No one is spared. Not even newborn babies, said South African lawyer Hassim. And like I said, I just hate, I revile, I, 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 I despise the notion that Israel and some of their, their defenders use of saying, well, don't you understand? Hamas is everywhere. They are aspiring the children. They are aspiring the adults. It's women, children. It's everyone. We just can't. Like, they're using the civilians as shields. They, they say these things in, in rapid succession, back to back, all the fucking time. But it's like, that doesn't give you the blank check to do collective punishment. It's just, none of it does. And, like, that is what, what everyone is really trying to say and bring to the table. And it is crazy how often it just gets brushed off by Israel. And not just Israel, but the U.S. And often the U.K. They, they often are a silent benefactor, maybe, when it gets a little too hot. But they are still there on the same side. And, and it's crazy. And it's fucking crazy. And I'm not that they're the only one. Like I said, I, I don't give France much fucking credit. You know, yeah, Macron said the right things one time or two. But that was once he kind of read the lay of the land, and it's not like they're doing anything. You don't hear or talk about any kind of sanctions against Israel. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Um, also, you, I, I don't want to say you want to give Russia credit here, but you can see that they actually are using the situation, too, to 
put a spotlight away from them because it's like that's kind of crazy that you're coming for us when meanwhile israel the u.s the uk all these motherfuckers are doing that shit so you know what i mean you gotta give them tactical credit for that if you ask me um hmm i feel like that's it i feel like that's that's what i wanted to say here yeah we've run out of road uh da, 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 da. let's move on to the next beat from pbs uh, this is one that just fell onto me when I was just kind of scrolling through Twitter. And I always hate when motherfuckers are saying, like, man, it's crazy that I, that this happened and, and no one's talking about it. Like, my, my thing to people is stop doing that. That is a terrible way to try to talk about some shit that's going on. Because this right here, what I'm talking about, is devastating. It's heartbreaking. It's crazy. But we live in a world where there's so much news all the fucking time. And yes, there is a problem that this is just one of those things that I, I only found it. The, PBS was like the biggest one I could find. The rest was like a little bit more obscure. But um, this is heartbreaking. This is sad. But please, don't do that shit. It's so fucking cringe. It's stupid. It, it, it doesn't actually affect like the conversation. It just makes people want to keep scrolling instead of actually like pressing click. So don't do that. Like, ew, stop. Uh, but yeah, from PBS News Hour. Also, I want to add to this is a, a transcript, so I'm only, only going to read like a brief section, and the rest is just going to be riff. Uh, families in disbelief after hundreds of bodies found buried behind Mississippi jail. The discovery of 215 bodies buried in unmarked graves behind a jail outside of Jackson, Mississippi, has left a community in disbelief. The families are angry that they were never notified of the deaths of how their loved ones are buried in graves marked by just a metal rod and a number. Emna Nawaz discussed the disturbing details that have emerged with Betterston Wade and attorney Ben Crump. Ben Crump. And they also add that um, this has been uh, machine and human generated in terms of this transcript. Um, so it may have some kind of errors in terms of like what was exactly said there. So they just kind of like give them the mea culpa. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is insane that, um, one person they highlight is Dexter Wade, who I believe yet yeah, was, um, he had been ki hit by a police car and killed and then buried in that cemetery, which essentially was like a pauper's grave. And, um, they, the, the mother, she... Um, um, sorry, I'm spacing out a little bit here. Um, but Bitterson Wade, they, you know, were looking, they were doing the best they could uh, to find their son. They were giving information to the police and they're just shrugging her off. Like, yeah, we're doing our best. We're, we're, we're doing our best to find him. And meanwhile, he was buried the whole fucking time. And like, I'm thinking in my head, okay, there's a lot of bodies here. You hear you hear the number 215. That's a lot. Maybe there's some kind of situation where, like, you know, they were overwhelmed over time and they, they couldn't find um, the, the families. They couldn't find the, the proper people to notify. And this just happens. That doesn't absolve it, but maybe that, that's – I'm trying to give reason to it. But in the situation with Dex Wade, he had identification on him. The police could have done their due, their goddamn due diligence here and notified Miss Wade. Like, or it, it's crazy to me. It's insane to me that um this happened not once but hundreds of times. Also, I think there's one thing I did want to pull here from the end of the article if I can find it. Let me do a little scrolling. Um. We know based on the records from the coroner's office that since uh, 2016, uh, 2016, in the last eight years, we can identify 215 individuals that were buried behind that jail, and their families have not been notified. Furthermore, Mr. Wade was number 672. That means there are 671 other people buried behind that jail marked with only a number. There's just something that's just so so fucked up about that to me um and also the fact too that like you talk to the some of the family and they're like well what are you looking for like and and i know from like ben crump i believe he said like one we're requesting an investigation from like i believe like the fbi um to really get involved sort this out um and then i think from you know one of the family members they said hey we really just want 
like the state, you know, the mayor, somebody to come out and apologize, explain to us like how we got here because we haven't even gotten that. And like the, um, um, Amnon Wash, she's like, wait, so you're saying no one's like even contacting you? And she's like, no, like that, that's crazy to me. Um, yeah, that's what, that's what Betterson Wade said. Um, yeah, no, no one has reached out to me to say, to explain it, to explain what happened to my son. But I did at least have city supervisors, the supervisor board, uh, supervisors to say that they hated what happened to me, but I haven't had, um, said any, I haven't had said anything. Nobody from JPD Jackson police department have came to me and acknowledged me. So there you go. That, that might be some little bit of error or just, you know, maybe just vernacular and talking since this is a transcript. But yeah, I mean, that's unfortunate. That's so fucked up. Like, you would think you would at least have people to come out and say, we're sorry. But that makes it so much more suspicious, no? Because didn't I mention that Dex was hit by a police car? I don't know. I don't know. You know me. I just keep keep getting my fucking suspicion hat on. It just floats on in. Like, I don't know what to do. And I just keep talking. But it's just, that's so crazy to me. I wonder what the fuck could have happened there. But uh, I'm not even getting into the racial component here because we're talking about Mississippi. We're talking about probably poor, poor people of color that are just being literally swept under the goddamn rug. So I felt remiss if I didn't talk about this shit. So that's why we're here, reading a transcript from PBS. (laughs) Um, All right, we have one more thing to cover. A bit of a silver lining, but I got to say, this one was weird. This one had me raising my eyebrow. I I did not expect this gully gutter mentality out of eBay. I did not see this coming, but um, uh, apparently they, shoo, they shoo first. (laughs) Anyway, we'll get into it. Let me take my break. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. From Reuters. eBay to pay $3 million penalty over harassment of couple behind newsletter. eBay has agreed to pay $3 million to resolve a U.S. criminal probe in, into a campaign by several of its employees to stalk and harass a Massachusetts couple whose online newsletter was viewed as critical of the e-commerce company. I didn't dig too, too deep and like read it, what was said exactly, but apparently this was so scathing um, that, um, let's see... Seven former eBay workers admitted to participating in an extensive campaign in 2019 that involved sending the couple cockroaches, fly larvae, and a bloody Halloween pig mask. And when I initially heard this story, I was listening to the BBC while I was at work, and it was described that they had received a package that was a wet specimen. And for some reason to me, because I was kind of like, you know, just listening as I was working, that took me out because I was like the horror of getting the phone call that you had received some kind of unidentified wet specimen gave me chills, gave me chills because I I took it to almost a darker place than a bloody Halloween pig mask. You feel me? And maybe you did as well. I don't want to like talk too deep on that. But so I'm thinking like what could have been said that that. That, that triggered this kind of response from a company that is as big as eBay. But who knows, man? Capitalism just makes people do crazy-ass fucking shit. But the victims were David and Ina Steiner, a married couple in Natick, Massachusetts, who produced the newsletter E-Commerce Bites. That sounds so cute. Like, what could they have said that was so scathing and so damning? Um, and have sued eBay over what... They say was a relentless campaign by its employees to terrorize them. Uh, now, the three million dollar fine represents the maximum penalty prosecutors said they could seek after charging eBay with six counts of stalking, obstruction of justice, and witness tampering for what they called its absolutely horrific criminal conduct. 
excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I want to read who's involved. Let me dig. Oh, I'm getting a little lag here. Um, the current CEO is Jamie Lenoni, and he called the company's conduct in 2019 wrong and reprehensible. Um, essentially just saying, you know, hey, we're better now. We're doing better. Um, we're pro Steiners now. That's good. Um, but prosecutors said senior executives deemed the Steiners new le- newsletter critical of eBay in August of 2019. Then chief executive Devin Winnig texted another executive that it was time to take her down, referring to Einer Steiner. Now, I, I need to add that Winnig didn't face any criminal charges uh, because apparently he had absolutely zero knowledge of the actions of the other eBay employees. But let me read that that statement again. Take her down. Like, this is like some like Call of Duty talk. Like, what are you talking about? Like, we're going dark. Do what you have to do. Like, like what are you, what are you doing, bro? Like, to me, that is criminal. I don't know. Maybe I'm being dramatic here, but I am with the Steiners and thinking that more people should have been put on the hook for this shit. Uh, but hey, um, let's talk about the motherfuckers who did get hit. Overseeing the harassment campaign was Jim Ball, which he does sound like an enforcer. Um, a former Central Intelligence Agency employee who at the time served as eBay Senior Director of Safety and Security. His lawyer said he felt pressure do, to do something, a.k.a. he was like, oh, I'm in head busting mode. I could do that. I, I could totally turn into the thumb you want. I can do it. I can take her down. <laughs> I can take her out. <laughs> um, but in August of 2019, Ba and others traveled to, from California to Natick to surveil the Steiners and try to install GPS tracking device on their car. The Steiners spotted them and contacted police, prompting federal investigation. Now, Baugh was sentenced in September of 2022 to 57 months in prison. Others in the case have received punishments ranging from home confinement to two years in prison. So there's something there. Also, the Steiners' lawsuit remains pending and is set for trial in March of 2025. So here's hoping we're alive and still podcasting until the tale then. Um, Because hopefully, I I hope they get theirs. I hope they get their goddamn bread because this is crazy. You're having a little comfy, cozy newsletter and then some motherfuckers come for you? That's crazy. That's insane. No way. No how. So um, that's it. That's all I really have for today. Um, If you'd like to help out and support, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com, plus Isaiah News. Uh, for your financial support, I shout you out at the top of the month, dub the a newsy, and also plug a project if you like. Let's see, a few ways to hit me up, isaiahnews1 at gmail.com. Feel free to follow me or the uh, podcast on the socials. Also, please subscribe. Love new subscribers. We love to see new subscribers. You you give me a smile every time. I, I, would, I don't know. I don't want to get too crazy about it, too weird, but I just it, it helps out a lot. So I, I love seeing interaction with the pod. We love that. And that is the best way to do it, honestly. Not, I mean, I mean, money's great. Honestly, money is money really does talk a lot. But it, it help, we're building the, the quote unquote brand here, and that helps build the brand a lot. Um, simply clicking, it, 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 like I said, I know I don't shout out my clickers a lot, but thank you so much. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's really all I have. Um, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, comment, cool things. That's dope. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.